Hello students, welcome to the lecture on production system and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Define typology of products, describe product life cycle, explain the production system model, understand the characteristics of production systems, discuss the factors influencing manufacturing system, define the production system design. Let's start with the concept of production system. New product development, NPD, is a complex area of ideas and innovations involving strategy, management, research and development, production, marketing and decision making and requires linking science and technology invention or innovation with the marketplace. The success of new products mostly depends on new product development process and management including effective attainment of knowledge and using it as part of the product design process. Cooper indicated that new product development is a vital endeavor for modern industries. Product design is a goal-directed problem-solving activity that relies heavily on human experience creative thinking and related knowledge. It should be done by integrating creativity and innovation tools with axiomatic design methodology for durable product development. Villa indicated that continuing innovation in industries is defined as promoting a frequent redesign of offered products as well as of the production processes required. The economic success of a manufacturing firm depends upon their ability to identify the needs of its customers, to quickly create the subsequent products and to produce them at a low cost. Achieving these goals is not solely marketing a design or a manufacturing problem, but rather a management problem involving all of these functions. Production management involves the planning, organizing and controlling of the whole production process. Let us now discuss the typology of products. Classifying products into meaningful categories helps marketers decide which strategies and methods will help promote a business's product or service. Many types of classification exist. Considerations The key is to categorize products in ways that makes sense for business. This allows us to, for example, design separate marketing campaigns for each category of product we offer. The alternative using a one-size-fits-all marketing plan is often less effective than implementing several highly targeted plans. No simple recipe exists for categorizing products and services but there are some common product classifications in marketing. Convenience, shopping, speciality and unsought products according to the Advanced Dictionary of Marketing by Scott Daco. Convenience products. Convenience products involve items that do not require much customer effort or forethought. Food staples often fall into this category because customers can buy them nearly everywhere and at roughly the same prices. Marketing convenience products can be a challenge if there are many similar products competing for the customer's attention and driving down the price. Shopping products. Customers are willing to invest time and effort to buy shopping products. For example, a customer might compare ingredients prices and safety information for a variety of deodorants before making a final purchase. Often the most effective marketing approach is to use advertising and heavy promotions to develop brand preference and loyalty among customers according to the book Principles of Marketing by Ashok Jain. Speciality Products Speciality products require significant thought or effort. For example, 
a well-known luxury car model might be available at just a few local dealerships, meaning an interested customer has restricted options. Specialty products tend to be expensive, durable goods often involving authorized dealerships and personal selling. Unsought products. Unsought products are items customers aren't aware of or don't often think about. New products that have no brand recognition fall under this classification as do certain types of insurance. The marketing problems presented by an unsought product are as follows. First, we must convince customers they need the product or service. Second, we must convince customers to buy the product or service. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the product life cycle. The product life cycle, PLC, is used to map the lifespan of a product. There are generally four stages in the life of a product. These four stages are the introduction stage, the growth stage, the maturity stage and the decline stage. There is no set time period for the PLC and the length of each stage may vary. One product's entire life cycle could be over in a few months. Another product could last for years. Also, the introduction stage may last much longer than the growth stage and vice versa. The four stages of the product life cycle are Introduction The introduction stage is probably the most important stage in the PLC. In fact, most products that fail do so in the introduction stage. This is the stage in which the product is initially promoted. Public awareness is very important to the success of a product. If people don't know about the product, they won't go out and buy it. There are two different strategies we can use to introduce our product to consumers. We can use either a penetration strategy or a skimming strategy. If a penetration strategy is used, then prices are set very high initially and then gradually lowered over time. The second pricing strategy is a skimming strategy. In this case, we set prices very low at the beginning and then gradually increase them. This is a good strategy to use if there are a lot of competitors who control a large portion of the market. Profits are not a concern under this strategy. The most important thing is to get product known and worry about making money at a later stage. Growth. If one is lucky enough to get product out of the introduction stage, then enter this stage. The growth stage is where product starts to grow. In this stage, a very large amount of money is spent on advertising. We want to concentrate on telling the consumer how much better product is than competitors' products. There are several ways to advertise products. We can use TV and radio commercials, magazine and newspaper ads, or we could get lucky and customers who have bought product will give good word of mouth to their friends, family. Maturity. The third stage in the product life cycle is the maturity stage. If product completes the introduction and growth stages, then it will then spend a great deal of time in the maturity stage. During this stage, sales grow at a very fast rate and then gradually begin to stabilize. The key to surviving this stage is differentiating product from the similar products offered by competitors. Due to the fact that sales are beginning to stabilize, we must make products stand out among the rest. Decline. This is the stage in which sales of product begins to fall. Either everyone that wants to has bought product or new, more innovative products have been created that replace ours. Many companies decide to withdraw their products from the market due to the downturn. The only way to increase sales during this period is to cut costs.
Julie, today I will overview an important marketing concept with you called the product life cycle, which describes the stages in the sales history of a product or service. Thanks teacher, what are the key characteristics of the product life cycle? Well Julie, the key characteristics are that firstly, a product has a limited life. Secondly, a product sales history follows an S-curve until sales eventually decline. Thirdly, the inflection points in the sales history locate the stages known as introduction, growth, maturity and decline. Fourthly, the life of a product may be extended. And fifth point, the average profit per unit of the industry rises and falls over the life cycle. What are the marketing challenges for each stage of the product life cycle? Each stage has its challenges for example the introductory stage requires the marketer to create awareness and acceptance by opinion leaders within the early adopter group. The growth stage challenge is to maintain supply and quality consistency while establishing brand identification and market position. At the mature stage a firm needs to maintain and improve its profit, defend its position and look for growth segments of the market. In decline, cost reduction, pricing and targeting is important to profitability, and planning is required to determine exit timing. Teacher, what are the strategic implications of the product life cycle theory? Well Julie, the strategic implication of the product life cycle theory requires that each stage warrants different objectives, marketing mix, strategies and a different management focus. Both Watson and Day, two noted academics have conducted extensive research on the product life cycle and have concluded that an intermediate stage between growth and maturity is required, which they call competitive turbulence. This recognizes the implications and effects of a slowdown in market growth and oversupply. Brought on by the entry of new competitors and the increase in capacity of existing ones. For example Apple's iPod it has gone from growth and is now entering maturity. Apple's iPhone has skipped the introductory stage and has been in growth from the outset. The product life cycle will vary by product and industry. Thanks teacher, for explaining this important market concept to me. Let's know the meaning of production system model. A production system which produces a large number of items in many steps can be modeled as a continuous flow problem. The resulting hyperbolic partial differential equation, PDE, typically is non-linear and non-local, modeling a factory whose cycle time depends non-linearly on the work in progress. One of the few ways to influence the output of such a factory is by adjusting the start rate in a time-dependent manner. We study two prototypical control problems for this case. Demand tracking where we determine the start rate that generates an output rate which optimally tracks a given time dependent demand rate and backlog tracking which optimally tracks the cumulative demand. The method is based on the formal adjoint method for constraint optimization incorporating the hyperbolic PDE as a constraint of a non-linear optimization problem. We show numerical results on optimal start rate profiles for steps in the demand rate and for periodically varying demand rates and discusses the influence of the non-linearity of the cycle time on the limits of the reactivity of the production system. Meaning of production system Production systems are the methods and procedures used to produce goods for the market. Production systems utilize material, capital, transportation and labor resources to produce and distribute products. Allocating resources Bringing in materials and equipment is an important step in a production system. It involves working with suppliers, warehousing raw materials and supplies, installing machines and equipment, and making the most use of materials with as little waste as possible. Division of labor. Division of labor is how workers and their skills are utilized. Assembly line methods simplify a worker's skills to limited tasks to increase productivity. 
flexible, lean manufacturing requires workers to work with a team at a station and be able to do many tasks. How divisions are made depends on the nature of the work. Designing workspaces to meet demand. The factories and other locations where assembly happens must be organized in a rational and efficient way to increase production. Factories may be designed for maximum efficiency of one product, such as using an assembly line method, or be designed to build multiple products to meet market demand, such as using lean manufacturing methods. Distribution Transportation over land, water and air is essential for getting goods to the market. Communications technology and globalization have allowed goods to be shipped all over the world. Classification of production system Production systems can be classified as job shop, batch, mass and continuous production systems. Job shop production Job shop production are characterized by manufacturing of one or few quantity of products designed and produced as per the specification of customers within prefixed time and cost. The distinguishing feature of this is low volume and high variety of products. A job shop comprises of general purpose machines arranged into different departments. Each job demands unique technological requirements, demands processing on machines in a certain sequence. Characteristics The job shop production system is followed when there is high variety of products and low volume, use of general purpose machines and facilities, advantages. Following are the advantages of job shop production. Because of general purpose machines and facilities, variety of products can be produced. Operators will become more skilled and competent as each job gives them learning opportunities. Full potential of operators can be utilized. Opportunity exists for creative methods and innovative ideas. Limitations Following are the limitations of job shop production. Higher cost due to frequent setup changes. Higher level of inventory at all levels and hence higher inventory cost. Production planning is complicated. Larger space requirements. Batch production. Batch production is defined by American Production and Inventory Control Society, APICS, as a form of manufacturing in which the job passes through the functional departments in lots or batches and each lot may have a different routing. It is characterized by the manufacture of limited number of products produced at regular intervals and stocked awaiting sales. Characteristics Batch production system is used under the following circumstances. When there is shorter production runs, when plant and machinery are flexible. When plant and machinery setup is used for the production of item in a batch and change of setup is required for processing the next batch. When manufacturing lead time and cost are lower as compared to job order production. Advantages Following are the advantages of batch production. Better utilization of plant and machinery promotes functional specialization. Limitations Following are the limitations of batch production. Material handling is complex because of irregular and longer flows. Production planning and control is complex. Work in process inventory is higher compared to continuous production. Higher setup costs due to frequent changes in setup. Mass production Manufacture of discrete parts or assemblies using a continuous process are called mass production. This production system is justified by very large volume of production. The machines are arranged in a line or product layout. Product and process standardization exists and all outputs follow the same path. Characteristics 
Mass production is used under the following circumstances. Standardization of product and process sequence. Dedicated special purpose machines having higher production capacities and output rates. Large volume of products. Shorter cycle time of production. Advantages. Following are the advantages of mass production. Higher rate of production with reduced cycle time. Higher capacity utilization due to line balancing. Less skilled operators are required. Low process inventory. Limitations. Following are the limitations of mass production. Breakdown of one machine will stop an entire production line. Line layout needs major change with the changes in the product design. High investment in production facilities. The cycle time is determined by the slowest operation. Continuous production. Production facilities are arranged as per the sequence of production operations from the first operations to the finished product. The items are made to flow through the sequence of operations through material handling devices such as conveyors, transfer devices, etc. Characteristics Continuous production is used under the following circumstances. Dedicated plant and equipment with zero flexibility. Advantages Following are the advantages of continuous production. Standardization of product and process sequence. Higher rate of production with reduced cycle time. Higher capacity utilization due to line balancing. Manpower is not required for material handling as it is completely automatic. Person with limited skills can be used on the production line. Unit cost is lower due to high volume of production. Limitations Following are the limitations of continuous production. Flexibility to accommodate and process number of products does not exist. Very high investment for setting flow lines. Product differentiation is limited. Material handling is fully automated. Process follows a predetermined sequence of operations. Component materials cannot be readily identified with final product. Planning and scheduling is a routine action. Normally we know that production is manufacturing and it is defined by economics benefits of specialization of labor. It is also known as division of labor. And now, this time it focusing service sector more so that business now wider and complex than earlier and managers' responsibilities also increased from past. Presently, managers develop their techniques that focuses mostly on efficiency of manufacturing and by this, workers were gone through under microscope and they will be under pressure for giving their best. A production system holds some characteristics, those are given below. System discrimination we know production system is involved on input and output. It does not consist with any waiter connection involving it is all phase that is connecting with the technology. All other phases that are related with the manufacturing are a production system environment. And this definition system normally called system discrimination. Interrelationship among system. We know that production is a process and it has a way to perform and those have a close relationship with each other. This is familiar as an interrelationship. Stratum formulation. A production system normally consists with hierarchy of the organization and those are related with the size of the organization and the function of the organization. And stratum normally related with the size, hierarchy and the function of the organization. Specialization of function. If the production system expands its area of production and large number of hierarchy and start each performing specialized function, then the interrogation function of the specialization will give the maximum output or benefit. Increase of entropy. We know that everything is changing in our life day by day. We need to cope with those changes. 
we will change our old employee by the new ones we will replace our machine by new machine and we will change our technology by new technology for stability of our production is finality here we have an aim to reaching goals and to reach goals we will use various kinds of ways there is no boundary to make a function in such a way here the main topic is to gain the ultimate goal and here there will be lots of approaches to converting the inputs to outputs scope of production management in fact we apply principles of management and functions of management in our day to day life we all know from morning till night we plan our activities we coordinate available resources and control our activities to achieve certain goals so also any organization must follow the principles of management for its survival and growth the same is applicable to production management also reading and learning production management will enable one to be capable of solving the problems of the organization maybe an educational institution production shop hospital departmental shop or even a barber shop product manufacturing system often produces standardized products in larger volumes the plant and machinery have a finite capacity the facilities constitute fixed costs which are allocated to the products produced variable costs such as labor cost and materials cost while manufacturing the product use value and economic values are added to the product hence the product is a store of values added during manufacture because the input costs and output costs are measurable the productivity can be measured with certain degree of accuracy product can be transported to the markets and stored physically until it is sold service service system present more uncertainty with respect to capacity and cost services are produced and consumed in the presence of the customer we cannot store the service physically because of this the service organizations such as hotels hospitals transport organizations and many other service organizations the capacity must be sufficiently or consciously managed to accommodate a highly variable demand sometimes services like legal practice and medical practice involve professional or intellectual judgments which cannot be easily standardized because of this the calculation of cost and productivity is difficult project project system does not produce standardized products the plant machinery men and materials are often brought to project site and the project is completed the project is of big size and remains in the site itself after completion as the cost can be calculated and allocated to the project with considerable accuracy productivity can be measured once the project is completed all the resources are removed from site there is no best manufacturing system for any product the choice of the system depends on various circumstances but it must meet two basic objectives namely it must be able to meet the specifications of the final product and it must be cost effective the product specifications can be met by choosing the right technology but that is not always an easy task since stricter specifications add to the cost of the product there is always a trade off between the desired specifications and the cost to achieve such specifications for example sophisticated injection molding machines and high quality plastics can produce excellent dolls cheaply provided they are produced in volume however if their demand is limited they may not be able to compete with home made dolls produced in small quantities and sold at a fraction of the price of the molded version various factors which determine the choice of the manufacturing process are as follows effect of volume variety 
One of the major considerations in the process selection is the volume variety of the products. High product variety requires highly skilled labor, general purpose machines, detailed production planning and control system. On the other hand, low product variety that is one or few products produced in large volumes enables the use of low skilled labor, highly automated mass production processes using special purpose machines and simple production planning and control systems. Shaded Area in each bar suggests the manufacturing system desirable for the indicated volume. Unshaved area in the lower portion of the column implies that it is inadvisable to use the continuous form when the batch is really small. Similarly, when the batch is really large, it is not at all advisable to use the project form. For these reasons, decisions involving process selection must be taken while formulating the corporate strategy of the firm. Capacity of the plant The projected sales volume is a major influencing factor in determining whether the firm should go in for intermittent or continuous process. Fixed costs are high for continuous process and low for intermittent process while variable costs are more for the intermittent process and less for continuous process. Environment Environment brings in new technologies and forces the adoption of new process of manufacturing. For example, wooden furniture is gradually being replaced by metals and plastic. A furniture manufacturing unit will have to change its technology, that is change from one-off production to batch production to fall in line with changing times. Similarly, as market preferences change due to fashion or other reasons, the manufacturing process has to be changed accordingly. It's probably safe to say that most people love to buy things. They love to buy clothes, cars, cell phones, and even nice meals. Many people would probably also say companies in those industries would be exciting to work for. But would you feel confident running the manufacturing facilities? Yeah, manufacturing is perhaps the most ominous and mysterious portion of the supply chain. Because items today are rather complex, and because the distance between manufacturers and retailers is often so great, most people know very little about the manufacturing process. At best, they might guess some of the materials used to make it or maybe where the item was made. But ask them how the item was actually created. Yeah, that's what I thought. Look, rather than try and figure out how each product or service is produced, let's figure out which issues a supply chain manager needs to consider in manufacturing a product. And to make it even easier, we'll consider manufacturing facilities near your home. Yeah, believe it or not, most of you live near modern manufacturing facilities. In fact, many of us visit these manufacturing facilities and assembly plants many times each week. Do you know what I'm talking about? Think about it. Yep, you got it, restaurants. Restaurants take raw materials and transform them into complex end items just like manufacturing plants do. Before the first burger is ever served up to a customer, someone was responsible for designing the burger. Believe it or not, companies like McDonald's and Red Robin have research and development teams just like Ford and Sony. So we need R&D to design an excellent burger. We need procurement to purchase the right ingredients. And we need to think about how to manufacture a burger that will still be delicious after the drive home. In running these manufacturing facilities, executives must consider trade-offs related to cost, quality, speed, and flexibility. Higher quality burgers take more time to manufacture and ingredients are more expensive. Offering the customer more options could be more costly and time consuming to produce. But high quality burgers made slowly with lots of customer options are more likely to be desired by hamburger lovers. So in order to make your dining experience perfect in a way that provides the restaurant a profit, an executive must understand what the customer is willing to accept as standard on a burger and what can be customized for each burger. And this will dictate decisions related to labor, machinery, inventory, capacity, and perhaps the restaurant's design and location. 
So, now you better understand that even manufacturing hamburgers is about more than material and labor cost. And it's only after considering design, manufacturing, and resources that companies can properly explore outsourcing, offshoring, and in the case of hamburger restaurants, franchising. So, next time someone says outsourcing decisions are only about low cost, you'll know better. Right? Good. So, you ready to manage a Boeing facility? Look, manufacturing an airplane will always be intimidating, but hopefully now you have a better feeling about the important issues and considerations product designers and supply chain managers must confront in delivering millions of high quality products and services to customers all over the world. Meaning of production. Production can be explained as an act of either manufacturing or mining or growing of goods, commodities, generally in bulk for trade. Production is a method employed for making or providing essential goods and services for consumers. Definition of production system. Production system may be defined as production system utilizes materials, funds, infrastructure and labor to produce the required output in form of goods. Importance of production planning and control. The system of production planning and control serves as the nervous system of a plant. The principal advantages of production planning and control are summarized below. Better service to customers. Production planning and control through proper scheduling and expediting of work helps in providing better services to customers in terms of better quality of goods at reasonable prices as per promised delivery dates. Fewer rush orders. In an organization where there is effective system of production planning and control, production operations move smoothly as per original planning and matching with the promised delivery dates. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The economic success of a manufacturing firm depends upon their ability to identify the needs of its customers to quickly create the subsequent products and to produce them at a low cost. Production management involves the planning, organizing and controlling of the whole production process. Job shop production are characterized by manufacturing of one or few quantities of products designed and produced as per the specification of customers within prefixed time and cost. Manufacture of discrete parts or assemblies using a continuous process are called mass production. This production system is justified by very large volume of production. Production facilities are arranged as per the sequence of production operations from the first operations to the finished product. A production system which produces a large number of items in many steps can be modeled as a continuous flow problem. Service system present more uncertainty with respect to capacity and costs. Project system does not produce standardized products. The plant, machinery, men and materials are often brought to project site and the project is completed.